engines produce a lot of heat and need to be cooled. In marine diesel engines, this is generally done by pulling seawater through a heat exchanger, which cools the engine. Um, and this is done by means of a, of a rubber paddle wheel. So this rubber impeller needs uh, frequent checking and changed occasionally. And that's usually done on a, on a yearly service. It's been about 10 months since the last service um, but we're going to be heading out in a few weeks time so instead of waiting the full year till the service um, is due um, I thought it'd be probably prudent to do it now so I don't have to do it for the rest of the year. So I'm going to start off by checking the impeller. Um, I've already flushed fresh water through it um, at the end of last season so that should be fairly clean and then we'll uh, hopefully be ready for the new season ahead. So the raw water comes in there up through the sea chest filter and then down here to the engine. That hose clip is very rusty so I'm going to replace that just as part of the uh, service. It's actually seized in place this. It's a bit better now. And be very careful not to drop anything down the abyss. Good job I caught it when I did and then I can uh, replace it. I'm just replacing it with these two hose clips. I mean anything below the waterline should be double hose clipped anyway. So probably just as well I spotted that. So the plate needs a bit of a clean as well. So I didn't actually service it last time, but um, it looks like there's no gasket there. I think there's been a liquid gasket used. There's been no leaks or anything, so yeah, it's obviously worked fine. Pretty well stuck in there. I mean, the one thing I don't want to do is get screwdrivers and leave it out because I know that that can damage the, the seal. So this, this is taking ages to get out. It's really stuck in there. So what I'm about to do is just pull a little millimetre or two on each blade to get it this far. Even though there's nothing obviously wrong with that, because it's such an important part, I'm just going to replace it anyway and then just keep that as a spare. It's a good argument for taking your impeller out at the end of the season and putting it somewhere where it can kind of regain its shape a bit. No, I'm going to stick a new one in I think. Uh, keeping the cooling water going through the engine is obviously important. I think it's one of the top five uh, reasons for call-outs, uh, the emergency services, uh, the RNLI and things, is the lack of cooling water. And it can actually seize your engine, so you shouldn't really skimp on this sort of thing. We've got a Volvo Penta TMD22, which in its original form was a Perkins Prima. And the impeller that I've just taken out is an original. A259. Uh, four zero, I think. Uh, and on board, I have a spare one, which is a Johnson one zero two seven, which is identical dimensions. So I thought I'd replace the original, since it has been a bit bent, and seeing as I'm doing the servicing anyway. Um, but they don't have an original, so they've given me a Jabsco one two one zero which is identical dimensions. Um, but there we've got three different manufacturers with three identical impellers at all different prices. So it's, I can see how it's a bit confusing for, for people. It's confusing for me. I've now got three impellers on board with only one gasket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remake this gasket a few times. So I've got some spare gaskets as well from the uh, gasket maker. So there's the cutout, and there's the original. There we've got a spare gasket. So the next job is to give this a bit of clean faceplate. It's not too bad, it's fairly flat, um, but it's just got a lot of gunk on it. So give it a clean with a bit of wet and dry paper. That 
to give it a nice uh, watertight fit up against the gasket and also a nice clean surface for the impeller to slip around. So I'm just going to put a drop of washing up liquid on the inside there to help it back in. And some on the outside as well to lubricate it just to get it going initially. So that should help it slide in and get started. I can always put a little bit of cable tie on there just to squeeze it shut. Yeah, I'm going to put a cable tie on there. So that should squeeze it so I can get that in. And then when I push it in, that cable tie should slip off. So I always try and make sure that the uh, numbers are on the outside. Even though the numbers on this one are one way, you can see the outline of the cam on there. So I'm just going to reinstate it the way that it came off. Line up the gasket with the cam, wash the good on the inside just to get the impeller on its way. I've also heard that if you put it on the gasket, the gasket has a tendency to splay out and not create a watertight seal. So I'll go along with that advice. The other thing to do is obviously put them diagonally as well. So when you come to tighten it up, it doesn't buckle the plate. Put a bit of rag just underneath there so it collects any drips and stops any salty water dripping down in the engine bay. Uh, and also, if you happen to drop any bolts, they kind of collect in the rag. So the other thing would be nice is if they give you access to these things without putting something in the way, because then you need two different tools to do the job. So that should have been it, job done, but that didn't happen in this case. So this is typical. I've got everything back in place and I forgot to put the little end cap on the impeller. So I'm going to take the whole thing out again and replace the end cap. So look at the gasket stayed in place so I can get this back in quite easily, hopefully. So what starts out as a relatively simple job can escalate into a more expensive and time-consuming project. So while uh, changing the impeller, I managed to shear off a bolt on this side and I also noticed a crack in the, um, in the pulley wheel here. So I think the only way to deal with it is to take the whole thing off. Loosened it enough. Actually, maybe before I do that, I'll take uh, the pipes off. I don't want to get any salt water off the engine if I can help it. Although I suppose a little bit's inevitable, which means taking these hose clips off for Jubilee clips. Try and do this without much water spillage. anything like me you'll forget about the washer and you'll take the bolt out and the washer will go straight down the bottom of the bilge so see there's the washer see this one hasn't got one on okay second bolt and there's the water pump Oop. The crack what? and there's the sheared off bolt Okay, so I'm going to clamp that in with my more grips. Oh, that is tight. So I've got to remove this pulley, you can see there where the crack is, and it does go all the way around there, so definitely needs replacing. So I did find a replacement locally, but it was 180 euros for that, which is quite a lot. I mean, I could have got it cheaper from the UK, but as we're leaving in a few days time, I need to get it replaced. So I managed to borrow 
off a fellow crewver, of Antinupavidus, um, a pulley remover, which is a really handy piece of kit, which is uh, something I really need to get into my toolbox. So you just mount it over the pulley like so. And then a 14 mil spanner. Funny what enough, is Ant was making a video on how to do this. Just as I went over to borrow his, his uh, pulley. And there it goes. So that was 180 euros. Can you believe it? I mean, the pump itself um, you can get from the UK for just under 300. So that is an expensive bit of engineering. hammering on there and it's got a bit threads have gone a bit dulled so that might have been with somebody trying to tighten it up too too tight it might be a little bit beyond repair so this has got to be done to uh, 40 newton meters but I haven't got a torque wrench at the moment so I'll have to borrow one but I'm going to leave that for now until I can sort that out properly because I've got to drill out this hole as well So the unfortunate thing is, I put a new gasket in, a new seal, and I sealed it really tight. And obviously when you take that off, you destroy the gasket. And so the whole thing needs removing, re-sanding again, and putting back. Which is a damn shame. It's no good, I'm going to have to pull this impeller out and get it machine drilled if I can. Um, so basically I took it to a machine shop and um, they couldn't drill it out so what they did is they welded a tiny little end on while it was still inside and then they ground out a, sock, uh, a slit there so we could get the screwdriver in and got it out. So now we've got them all out. Well, incidentally, these were stainless steel screws as well, and I'm not sure they're the best things to have in a, a bronze housing like this. Or oh, is it brass? Bronze, I think. Um, but there, there are no other screws available apart from stainless steel. Even the stainless steel ones, they didn't have any with the hexagonal head. So what I've had to do is uh, take some Phillips screws like this and uh, grind it down to the right size. And even though I hate mixing screw heads up, it's one of my pet hates, but there's nothing I can do about it. It's going to hold it temporarily in place until I can get the right, uh, until I can source the right bolts. So, next thing I'll do is re clean everything the plate and the pump housing and get it nice and shiny again 1200 grit. Um, so, I'm just going to basically take these back, clean them so they're nice and uh, Tight, get a nice tight grip on it, and uh, replace the impeller, re gasket the seal, put it all back together, and replace the pump. I think this is about the third time I've done this now, and hopefully, I can get all of the bolts in place without messing up this time. It, it would be a perfect opportunity to service the whole kit and get everything out and check the circlips and everything, but I haven't got a service kit on board and I couldn't get all, hold of one quick enough. So I'm just going to put it back together as it is um, and then do the whole thing again. <laughs> so that's that cleaned up quite nicely and uh, hopefully third time lucky. So there's nothing wrong with the impeller because that was fitted new 
just a few days ago. So I've got some lubricant here as well. I'm going to do everything right this time because I think I've been jinxed the last few times. Spread around. It actually doesn't matter which way you put the blades in in these models because they, they find their own find their own way anyway. Why well, it squeezes in. What you don't want to do is to get the cable tie in there as well because then you've got to get the whole thing out again. And now I've lost the end cap. Oh, there it is. With all this in and out in, I've just noticed I've actually broke one of the blades. Ah, oh, so I've got the whole thing's going to come out again. How many times now? I'm really getting hacked off of this whole thing. Oh, oh, I don't believe it. Look, that's a brand new blade. Oh, that's with all the messing around trying to put it in, snap screws off, put it back in again, take it out. That's going to be chucked out now. I can't believe I've done that. Right. Right. So even more expense. I've got a new one. So my uh, spares are depleting really quickly at the moment. Right. So much lube in there that I think this might just fit in anyway. End cap obviously doesn't fit on that particular model. So finally the water pump was ready to put back in place with its new screw, new impeller and a new pulley. I'm just putting the water pump back in place. So once it's screwed in, I'm going to connect inlet pipe and the outlet pipe but sometimes the although it's supposed to be self-prime it doesn't always self-prime so I'll put some water in this pipe I think to do that. I've put water in this pipe as well I'm just putting some of this just to help with the suction fresh water so might not be strictly necessary on that side but I've definitely found that if I don't put enough on that side especially when the um, seacock's been on and off a few times as well it doesn't actually suck through and while I'm down here I just want to check the wastegate for the turbo let's make sure that's free yeah it's nice and free that's good. How much have got this sort of telltale thing here? There's a little hole there, you feel it squirting out and it goes into a cockpit drain. Everything seems to be good. So please give all of our videos a thumbs up, a like, click on the notification bell and subscribe. Uh, YouTube are continuing to block comments on family blogs. So if you want to comment please pop over to our Facebook page where there will be a link to this video. Um, and while you're over on the Facebook page please give that a like. We're almost up to uh, a thousand followers now so that would be great if we can uh, hit that milestone. So thanks as always to our patrons who support us both morally and financially in the making of these videos. So if you'd like to become a patron and uh, follow our journey a bit more closely and personally, it's very simple. Just click on the link here or in the description in any of the videos and follow the instructions. And thanks for watching. And if you want to do it,